on the records view for uh, accounts in this case you'll see here a new button so this button is supposed to take you to the create view of accounts and pre-fill the name fields this is the action that is available globally it also shows on opportunities as you can see here on contacts So let's see how it works. So when you click, click new, it takes you to the create view of accounts. As you can see, accounts creates. It passes a query parameter, which is the pre the value to presets. As you can see here, is presets. We're able to save. It shows on list view like any other record. So it uses this the usual create just presets a value and that's it. Great. Now onto the code. We're going to look into the global action, the, the action that's available for all modules, the new action. How to add an action that's available everywhere. These default actions are configured on core on the config folder within config services module record view and actions this file contains all the base actions that are available for mo all modules the ones that are common edits save save new cancel cancel create delete duplicate audits duplicate merge so as you can see, most of the modules have these actions. You can, if you need, exclude uh, some actions for some modules. This is also available on this configuration here. So this is the place or the configuration that we want to, ex to extend. As we've covered on, a, on the other session, we're going to add this configuration on an extension on the um, extensions folder. For that, we're going to use our default EXT folder. On the default EXT folder, we're going to replicate the same structure as before, just like we did on the session where we explained how to add custom configurations. So config services module record review and actions. This here follows the same structure for adding configuration as we saw on the other session. The only thing is that it overrides, or in this case, it adds a new action to the actions YAML that we saw before. So we go into the default actions, the actions within that array, and then we're going to add a new action here. After that, we're going to re-add the default actions to the actions array, to the default, and then set the parameters on the container. What do we need to add a new action to the record view? And a key, which should be uh, set with key here, and as the key of the array, a label. We're going to set it as a sync process. A sync process means that it's going to call the backend to do something the modes, meaning the modes that where it should show, detail, record, so forth, ACLs, so the ACLs that the action should check, meaning if you don't have access to edits, the, the given module trying to, to create the record for, like contacts, the action does not show because you don't have any edit permissions. And then you can add a, an extra set of parameters, which are usually dependent on the type of action you're doing, okay? But in this case, we just want to say that it's going to be expanded. I'm not sure if you noticed, but the new button was not on the actions dropdown, was directly 
next to the edit button. That is what the expanded does. If the expanded is set to false or is not set, it's going to go into the actions dropdown. Now that we added this configuration, you should do a repair and rebuild or a clear cache for the action to show on the front end. Once you do that, the button should be available for you to click on it. However, it's not going to work. We need a second step. The second step is the process handler. As we already mentioned, this is an async process. Sync process means it goes to the backend to do something. Now, where is our process handler? I've added our process handler within our default txt to the backend process record actions add new. Why did that I add a process handler here? To follow the same path that we use on core. See here, core, backend, process, service, record actions. And here you can find some of the other record actions. The delete, the duplicate, merge, print as PDF, and so forth. You don't need to do more configuration for this file to be picked up. You just drop it here. You're going to create and implement some interfaces that we're going to explain uh, next. And this file, this class, should be picked up as a service by Symfony automatically. It should be auto-wired and auto-configured. This is the way this works. So, as I said, we want to add a process handler. So, process handlers are what the process API uses to run the requests. So, there's a single API for all processes, which is a process API, which then, based on the A key, this key here, which is the same as this here, okay? This is what will be used to then select which service to use and to run. You probably noticed that there's a difference between this key, which is the record dash, and this one here, okay? So all record actions, like bulk actions and so forth, are going to be added a prefix to them. In this case, it's record dash add new, okay? So you just need to prepend record dash. We add our class, so the constructor, we pick up our services that we need. Now we're going to cover the methods that you need to implement uh, for the process handler interface, which this interface is what makes this service a process handler. One is the process type, so is our key. If this action requires or not an authenticated user, in this case it does, so role user, if you leave it blank, it can be called by a non-authenticated user. The next thing is required ACLs. The required ACLs are for checking on the backend side the, if the user that is calling this action has access to that action. And for that, you need to implement this and return an array with the ACLs you want to check. This configuration is very flexible and tries to cover all the scenarios that we have. This is the simplest scenario. We're just checking if for the module we're requesting, if you have ac access to edits. This module is dynamic, so if I'm on accounts and I click the new button, the request is going to send here accounts. If I'm on opportunities, it's going to send opportunities and so forth. So it's dynamic. That's why we're setting this dynamically here. It will check for whatever module if, it ha if you have access to that. So as you can see, we have a check on the front end to show or not a button depending on ACLs, this here. And on the back end, you have another check to see if whoever is calling this action, if they have access to that action. Then there is a configure method that you need to implement, but this is usually the same. We're going to skip this for now, but you just need to add like this and don't worry about this uh, for now. Then you need to implement, implement the validations. 
So every time the requests to this process handler is done, this is going to run. So we check if we received options, which is mandatory. If we, we need a module, let's check if we have that module. And let's also check if that module is a valid module. If it's not, we're going to throw an exception. Okay, so these are the base checks we're doing. Then finally, the run method. The run method is where your action really happens, your process, what you want to do really happens. In our case, we're going to redirect through the create view and we're going to pass some parameters. So how do we do that? We're going to grab the module from the options module. We're going to set the response data as you can see here. This is going to be sent back as response data. And we're going to set a handler. A handler is a front-end handler that runs after a process is invoked. So the front-end calls the back-end on the process API. When that returns, the front-end will read the response to see if there are er errors or not. And then we'll check, do we have a handler? Okay, if you have, let's run that handler. In this case, is to redirect. So the front-end will then redirect to the route we pass here. In this case, accounts slash create. Now, we saw that we want also wanted to preset the name field. How do we do that? We just pass a query param with the key of the field, in this case name, and the value we want to set. Just a warning, this does not work for all fields. Okay? Special fields like emails and things like that, this does not work, not work for that. For most of our cars, in more basic fields, if we can call it that, this sh should work. So we've set our response data. Now we're going to say, okay, my process went okay. I don't want to show any messages because we're going to redirect. And I set the response data. And that's it. This is all you need to do. So these two files are all you need to do to add that new action that we exemplified at the start of the session.